Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now answering question number six from the P1, Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level at Excel, June 2022 paper. And this question here, we have a pair of equations, and we have to uh, first of all show that these equations will lead to this third equation here. Basically, this is um, these are a pair of simultaneous equations, and part A of the question is asking us to kind of get ready to solve this simultaneous equation by combining these two, two equations together to give this one equation. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by substitution. So if you look at these two equations, if you want to um, kind of like solve a pair of simultaneous equations like this, where you have, they're not linear equations, you know, this one has got squared, and this has got cubed in it, um, x, y, and so on. They're not like linear simultaneous equations. These are equations which are nonlinear. And to solve them, the best way to deal with it is by using what's called substitution. So you look for a letter that's easy in either equation to make the subject of that formula. So in this case, if I want to make the x the subject, I'm going to have a fraction. If I want to make y the subject, I'm going to have a fraction. If I want to make this x the subject, I'm going to have to have a square root. So it's going to make things a bit more complicated. And in this equation, if I want to make this x the subject, I'll have a fraction. Um, it won't be too bad, but you know it's still going to be less hassle than if I make this y the subject. Of course, this x cubed, if I make the x, this x the subject, I'll end up with a cube root, which will make things more complicated. So if I take this y and make it the subject of this formula, so if I take this equation and I say y is equal to, I have to add x cubed to both sides, I have to take away 6x from both sides, now I can say this equation leads me to the y equals x cubed minus 6x. Now what I can do is in the, the first equation, I can replace the y with x cubed minus 6x because y is equal to x cubed minus 6x. So I'm going to now substitute this y instead of that y over there. So I have 2x. Now instead of y, I'm going to write x cubed minus 6x. Then I've got minus 3x squared is equal to 50. So you can see we've made the equation with just x's in it, no y's in it, which is what's required. So we've eliminated the y from the equation. And now we can simply expand this. That's going to give me 2x to the power 4 minus 2x times 6x is 12x squared. You've got minus 3x squared. And as it says equals 0, I'm going to subtract 50 from both sides. So I have equal 0 there. And now you can see this is going to give me 2x to the power 4 minus 12x squared. Oh, sorry minus 15x squared, minus 12x minus 3x, minus 12x squared minus 3x squared is negative 15x squared, and take away 50 is equal to 0, which is what was required for us to show. Okay, so here we have answered part A of the question, and we're going to go now on to part B, which is asking us basically to solve this equation and find the values of x which satisfy these two equations. So to solve these two equations simultaneously, it says hence solve the simultaneous equation. So they already gave us this kindly. So even if you couldn't do part A, and we see this equation and we're able to solve this equation, we would be able to do part B. And remember, we, we said y is equal to x cubed minus 6x. That might come in useful later on. So now, to solve this equation, this is one of those type of um, equ equations that involve what's called a disguised quadratic. Okay, a disguised quadratic. When you've got something that doesn't look like a quadratic because it's got this is like to the power of 4. It's a quartic equation. The highest power is 4. However, you know that x to the power of 4 is basically x squared squared. So this term is the square of that term. So if we can say let x squared, let x squared equals, for example, b, then this will be 2 times b to the power of 4. Sorry, 2 times b squared. Okay, or even u. Let me call it u just just in case. Sometimes we have these uh, other situations. So x squared equals u. That means x to the power 4 is equal to u squared. All right? Makes sense. So if you square that, you square that. So that means x to the power 4 can be replaced by u squared. So I have 2 u squared minus 15. x squared is u minus 50. Okay, let me just get rid of that. Okay. So this is now equals 0. This is now a quadratic equation. Right? It's got the highest powers x squared. So we've kind of modified this quartic equation and made it into 
something that looks like a quadratic equation. This is called a disguised quadratic. Now, if I solve this for u and then replace the u that I find with x, I will then be able to solve the original equation. So let's see if we can factorize this expression first. It's on this side. Um, always try to factorize first, if possible. Um, now, they say give the answers in fully simplified third simplified third form. It doesn't mean this can't be factorized because our answers are going to have to, we're going to have to take a square root because we'll end up with x squared equals something. So it's possible that it can be factorized. So always try that first. It's always better. 2u squared and minus 50. So two numbers that multiply together and give me negative 100u squared as a product. And the sum has to be negative 15 u. So when I multiply them together, I get minus 100. When I add them together, I get minus 15. Um, so let's think. We got, of course, 100 times 1 won't work. 50 times 2 won't work. Um, we're going to have nothing. 4 times uh, 25 won't work. 5 times 20 will work. 5 times 20 is 100. And 5 and 20 give you 15 with the difference between them. So we're going to have a ma minus 15u. So I'm going to put negative 20u and plus 5u. That will give me negative 100 squared, which is what we need from multiplying these two, 100u squared. And when I add them together, I get minus 15u. So now I can take out the common factor from these two terms. That's 2 and u. 2u times something gives me 2u squared. That's a u. 2u times minus 10 gives me 20, negative 20u. And u times plus 5 gives me plus 5u. So we end up with 2u plus 5 times... Um, u minus 10 equals 0. Okay, so we can say from here, therefore, that 2u plus 5 equals 0, or u minus 10 equals 0. So u is equal to minus 5 over 2, and u is equal to 10. So now we've said that let x squared equals u. So I can replace the u now with x squared. So therefore, x squared equals minus 5 over 2, and x squared equals 10. So if I try to solve this, I'm going to find the square root of negative 5 over 2, which is for which there's no solution. There's no real, no real solution. So that won't give us an answer that we're looking for. Okay, but this one will give us x equals plus or minus. Remember, I also should put plus or minus here, although it doesn't give us a solution. Plus or minus the square root of 10. So I have put the square root sign in myself in the equation. It wasn't there in the beginning. So I've said x squared equals 10. Therefore, x equals plus or minus the square root of 10. Okay, if the square root is there in the beginning of a question, when you didn't put it there, then that means just the positive square root. But here, because we're saying x squared equals 10, that means x could either be plus or minus the square root of 10. Okay, so there's the answer for x. Now, when we solve a pair of simultaneous equations, do not forget that we've got to find the x and y term. So a lot of students, they lose marks, they think they've got the answer here. But no, there's another... Um, step where we have to find the, the y values for each of these x values. So you have x equals the square root of 10, and you have x equals minus the square root of 10. And for each of these cases, you've got to find what y is. And we know y is equal to y is equal to x cubed minus 6x. That's what we're, we, we worked out from before. So therefore, we can say y is equal to, this is going to be the square root of 10 cubed minus 6 times the square root of 10. And for this one, you're going to have y equals negative the square root of 10 cubed, take away 6 times negative square root of 10. So this is going to give me, like this will be root 10 times root 10 times root 10, which is going to be 10 root 10. Okay, 10 root 10, because you're going to have 10, if you have root 10 times root 10, that gives me 10. So this two will give me 10 root 10, minus 6 root 10, which is 4 root 10. And this is going to give me, now here you're going to have negative, because you've got minus times minus times minus, and you'll have the same thing, minus 10 root 10, and you're going to have plus, this will be plus 6 root 10, which gives me negative 4 root 10. And you can confirm that using your calculator, which I'll do because we don't have the mark scheme yet. So let's just do that. Well, when I at the time of making this paper, I didn't have the mark scheme, so I'm just going to be sure, just in case I made a silly mistake. So I have root 10. Okay, that's to the power of 3, um, minus 6 times root 10, and that gives me 4 root 10, and then I have minus, minus 6 times 
minus root 10. So I'll just put that in a bracket like that. And this is minus root 10 all cubed. And that gives me minus 4 root 10. Okay, so I'm sure that I'm correct. So we can have our solutions. I'll just write them out in full. x equals root 10, y equals 4 root 10. And when x equals negative root 10, y equals negative 4 root 10. And there are our solutions. And we can always check our answers by substituting these two solutions back into the original equation if we want to check them. Just in case we made a mistake, so we have root 10 and we have 4 root 10 and we have root 10 and we have minus 4 root 10. If I were to substitute those into here, we can see that it should give us the right answer. So we have 2 times, we're going to have root 10 and then times um, 4 root 10. Okay, and we have minus 3 times, we'll have um, root 10, uh, oops, root 10, okay, and that's squared. And that should give us 50, which it does. And I'll also check for the other answer, which is uh, root, uh, that was negative root 10, sorry, negative root 10. I'll check for the answer, other answer, which is negative root 10. And I'll put that in here and see if it gives us the same answer. That's negative root 10 there. And that's going to be um, negative 4 root 10. That answer was that. And that's 2 times negative root 10. So negative root 10 and negative 4 root 10. I'll check for this to see if it also gives us 50. And it does. And then I'm going to check in this equation to see if that also works. So y is 4 root 10. So for the first one, 4 times the square root of 10 minus... Oops, I have to put that outside here. Minus, and now x is um, negative root 10. So I'll put negative the square root of 10. And that has to be cubed. Okay, and then plus 6 times negative root 10. Sorry, I'm starting with root 10. 6 times root 10, sorry. 6 times root 10. So I just need 6 root 10. Okay, sorry about that. That's using root 10 and minus uh, 4 root 10. That should give us 0, which it does. And just to check with the other one, you're going to have 6 times negative root 10. And this will be negative root 10 cubed. And this is negative 4 root 10. And that should also give us Zero. Good. So these, this pair of values satisfies both the equations as does this pair of values. Okay, so we have made sure that we've got the right answer. As I said, if you have time in the exam to check your answers in such a way, you should do so to, in case you've made a silly mistake. Right? If you have time. I know there's a lot of questions, especially this paper was very long, actually, 10 questions. And a lot of people were short of time. But if you do have time, this is a good way for you to check your answer. I'm doing so because at the time of, of, of answering these questions, the mark scheme hasn't been released. So I just want to make sure that I've got everything right. I haven't made any silly mistakes anywhere. Okay, so that concludes question number six from this paper from June 2022. Okay, so the important points to, to realize is uh, one of the very important points is not to stop once you've found x. When you're solving a pair of simultaneous equations, you've got to find both the variables, the x and y values here, that satisfy both equations. Okay, and don't forget when you take the square root of something, if the square root is not already there in the question, if it's like x squared equals something and you have to find the value or values of x, you must put plus or minus the square root of that thing unless you know, for example, it can only be positive. All right, so there's the answer uh, for this question. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the link which will appear in this region at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of solving equations um, will be under the, the um, playlist of equations, equations and inequalities, which will be found in the playlist that should appear somewhere over here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.